Hello and welcome back to Cemetery Scout. Today we are in Bristol, Rhode Island at the Mark Anthony DeWolf lot. I'm sorry for all the screaming you're probably gonna hear in the background of this video, but some people are having a party in a house pretty close to the cemetery. Anyway, this cemetery is named after the DeWolf family, who are one of the most important families in Rhode Island's history. Uh, in fact, they used to be known as the Great Folk by their contemporaries. Uh, this family has spawned statesmen, authors, privateers, uh, priests, all sorts of uh, different professions. But the biggest thing they're known for is being the single most vicious slave trading family in American history. This family alone was responsible for between 11 and 12 thousand enslaved Africans being transported across the Atlantic, which is absolutely insane. All right, so uh, in case that fact didn't clue you in, uh, this episode might be a bit of a bummer, but even besides the actual graves in here and the family's history, who they represent, the cemetery is set up in kind of a wild way. I really got to show you guys just the way everything's lined up in here. So as you can see, as I just walk along here, this cemetery is only like, I don't know, maybe 20% actual land that graves can and are on. Everywhere else is pretty much just like wild landscape. There's a lot of trees, there's a lot of branches, and I don't know, maybe there could be some graves back in there, but in my research, I didn't see anything indicating that there would be, and I don't see any just kind of looking. So uh, this whole enclosed space by this rock wall here really only encompasses just a teeny little bit of actual graves. In fact, there's even what looks like a, a stream, like an actual wild little stream that runs through the graveyard right here. Okay, so I was able to find a little bit of information about quite a few of the DeWolfs in here, but it's mostly just kind of their professions, how they died, who they're related to, stuff like that. So I decided I wanted to make the focus of this video on Captain James D. Wolf, who has his own separate path, his own separate tomb, and his own separate gigantic burial mound. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell you for sure which part of this gigantic burial mound or which one of these like couple of holes around the burial mound was the actual tomb of Captain uh, James DeWolf, uh, mostly because his grave has been robbed numerous times uh, since he was put to rest a, a couple centuries ago, mostly because he, at the time of his death, was the second richest man in all of the United States. But what I can tell you about is a good deal about his life because this guy here is without a doubt the most famous person I've covered on the show so far. Uh, Captain James DeWolf, after fighting in the Revolutionary War and actually being captured twice by the British, turned to the family business of the slave trade. And he did this despite the fact that Rhode Island actually outlawed the slave trade way back in 1787. 
meaning that this guy for decades illegally participated in the slave trade, allowing his family to fund and operate rum distilleries, textile mills, uh, insurance companies, banks, and a whole host of other industrial pursuits. And oh yeah, during this same time, he uh, was part of the Rhode Island House of Representatives and eventually even the US Senate. Yeah, that's right, a sitting elected official at the time of his service was funding an illegal slave trading empire. At least allegedly, because some people still contend that he severed all ties with the business after entering government. But the common consensus is that he was still involved. But despite this long history of building wealth off the illegal sale of human beings and a long political career, one incident in particular is the most famous of James DeWolf's life. Once in 1791 in Newport, Rhode Island, and then again in St. Thomas in 1795, DeWolf was indicted for murder. Both of these cases stemmed from the same incident that happened aboard his uh, slave trading ship, the Polly, back in 1791. According to testimony, an African woman that DeWolf had been transporting across the Atlantic on his slave trading ship had become afflicted with smallpox. Now, after trying to prescribe some treatment for the smallpox, DeWolf's ultimate solution to the problem was to have the woman tied to a chair, blindfolded, and lowered into the Atlantic to drown. DeWolf's defense of this act was that he was saving the rest of the ship from contracting the disease. And this defense saved him from prosecution in both cases, with the judge advocate in the second case saying, this act of James DeWolf was morally evil, but at the same time physically good and beneficial to a number of beings. And while I'm reading you legal documents, I wanted to mention a passage from the original indictment back in 1791, just because I like all the little flourishes that were added around the legal language. James DeWolf, not having the fear of God before his eyes, but being moved and seduced by the instigation of the devil, did feloniously, willfully, and of his malice aforethought, with his hands clinch and seize in and upon the body of said Negro woman, and did push, cast, and throw her from out of said vessel into the sea and waters of the ocean, whereupon she then and there instantly sank, drowned, and died. This here is the other grave I wanted to give a little bit of time to. This is the gravestone of Ajwa DeWolf, an African woman who was brought across the Atlantic by Captain James DeWolf as a child. Now Ajwa was brought across with another little boy named Polidor. They were brought across as a couple and eventually married. These two were intended as a Christmas present for James' wife, Nancy. They remained enslaved by the DeWolf family until slavery was outlawed in Rhode Island, in which case they continued to live on the DeWolf's land and work for them. Now, from what I've read, Ajwa and Polidor had a heavy hand in raising a lot of the children of the DeWolf family, to the point where there's even a nursery rhyme about them that is still known to some of the descendants of the DeWolf family today. It goes, Ajwa and Polidor, sitting in the cellar way, down fell the cellar door, bump went Polidor, up flew the cellar way, off blew Ajwa. I don't know about that one, guys. <laughs>